Hi X, today, I, for the first time want to share with you my story with all of you, even though it told me not to speak nor write down its name. I will tie to green text it all, but bear with me, I will probably also write something in detail outside the green text limitations. Be 16 years old. Normal kid, didn't have many friends, just the usual two to three close ones. Grow up in the country, hunting is one of the main entertaining things to do here. My father teaches me how to hunt, birds, deer, moose, you name it. I always looked up to my father. Out hunting for forest birds, don't know the English name, one day, it's summer, the sun is shining, and it's hot outside. We walked through the forest, not much luck with the birds, but I loved spending time with my dad, so I didn't really care. Arrive at a small lake, decide to take a break, eat some food and drink some water. My father spots a old beer bottle kinda hidden in the grass. There is no signs of human activity in this forest, so it kinda was a little strange. Dad says jokingly. One day anon, when I'm gone, and dug down in the dirt, I want you to find this place, open a beer, and drink it while thinking of the day we went hunting together. Dad puts the bottle in down the grass, under the tree he found it again. We get up and leave. This beer bottle will become significant later so just bear with me. Okay so fast forward two years, my dad unfortunately died, natural causes, heart attack. B18. Visit my parents home where I grew up, I moved to the town across the fjord to go to school. It's winter time by now. Happy to see my mom doing well even though my dad recently passed away. I'll decide to spend the weekend. When I wake up the next day, Saturday, I suddenly remembered the old beer bottle my dad and I found while hunting back in the day. The days are short, the landscape looks a lot different when the snow covers up the trees and ground in the winter, and I had not been into these forests for a while decided to go anyway. I grab my dad's old hunting equipment, including my old rifle. After driving for maybe 30 minutes on my dad's snow scooter, I reach the thick part of the forest. Too thick, have to walk the rest. Figure it would not take long to reach the lake me and my dad sat down by two years ago. As I walk trough the completely white landscape with snow to my waist, minutes turn to hours. Wind was picking up, and it started snowing. Fuck, I decided to turn around and get back before shit hits the fan. Too late. JPG. By now it's a full on blizzard, the trees around me support me some cover, but the thick snow, coming down from the sky makes my vision really bad. I get lost, it's getting clearer. I decided to build me some kind of shelter under a tree, remove some snow, build it into a wall to decrease the wind flowing trough my shelter, the wall goes around the trunk of the tree, leaving me some space. I break up some branches and put them on the ground just to isolate prevent loss of body heat now laying on the ground with little to nothing to cover myself with I figured this trip wouldn't take long and didn't really take any survival gear with me I know I'm fucking stupid LT gets darker and the blizzard eventually calms down now only big fluffy snowflakes slowly surf down from above. The sight is kind of comfy, even though I'm sure I'll die, if I don't engage some type sort of activity to prevent even further loss of body temperature. 
Start doing push-ups, sit-ups, some squats, but it doesn't really help. Can't stay here anymore, need to get back or I'm a goner. My tracks are gone, as if no one ever walked out here. Fuck, choose the general direction of where I thought I came from. Starts walking. In what seemed for whatever baited in snow up to my waist, just the same as before. It had gotten a lot colder, and now the only the light from the moon guided my way. Crack wait what? It sounded like a fucking avalanche, and then I realized, I'm on top of frozen water. As fast as I could I threw myself down and spread my limbs, as to spread out my body weight. Too late. Crack I fell trough the ice. The cold water gave my body a shock, as in panic I tried to get up, only cracking more of the ice, I started hyperventilating, and could feel the weight of my clothes drag me down. This is it, I'm dying out here, how fucking ironic, trying to celebrate my dad's life, I'll die myself. After some time, hard to say how long. It all felt like an eternity. My feet slowly lost their ability to move. I thought to myself, just give up, no one will help you. And just as I said the last word of that phrase inside my head, I saw it, the death dealer. Then the death dealer gave me cool powers and I got a black diamond sword and the ability to kill anyone when I feel like it. I can shoot fire and do front flips really high. Being revived by death is so cool. My fan FIC don't steal. This animal, no, this thing, was huge, I'm sure it was taller than 7 feet. I couldn't really tell the details from where I was, laying almost dead from hypothermia in the water, my mind was clouded. A long and grey or white hand gently reached out to me, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to fucking die. Grabbed the hand with all the strength I could muster. The thing lifted me up, as if I was lighter than a feather, gently putting me down on the ground. No I could see it, with every detail, at first I thought it was a angel, my guardian had come to save my life, for it was not my time. But no, this was no angel, not at all. It was tall, as I mentioned, above seven feet, it was completely white slash grey, it had huge black eyes, looked like a couple of oversized marbles. A thin black lip, stretching from cheek to cheek, no hair, no nose, or any human features really. This creature just looked at me, and then, it smiled. The mouth on this thing, it was fucking terrifying. The teeth, was long as needles, and even darker than its eyes, standing out in all directions. And a blood red tange, hidden far back into its jaw. LT also had spikes standing out here and there, put not spikes sticking out from its skin, but spikes that looked to be a part of its body. What the fuck are you? I screamed while crying. Confused and filled with fear to the core. Its mouth didn't move, but this dark, but gentle voice entered my head, as if it was speaking directly into my mind. Arachiel. Now, I've googled and searched for answers, this name apparently is the name of a fallen angel in Christianity, I don't believe much in religion, but I don't really know guys, I'm still scared shitless. The story doesn't end here though. I couldn't move, I was cold as the water I just fell into, every sense the human body has, screamed to run, run as fast as you can, run. I could not, even if I wanted, 
my body stayed there, in the shadow of a rachial. The same voice as before trembled trough my head, this time not as gentle, more like the sound of thunder, it was strong. Do you wish to die? What? No. I don't want to fucking die, get away from me. I panicked, I could not open my mouth, I could not speak, I could almost not breathe. Very well, said Arachiel. Sorry guys, something came up, I had to go, sorry for being an ass, I will continue now. My body started warming up, I swear I could feel the ice melting from my skin and clothes. It was like a explosion of heat beneath my skin. Arachiel lifted its twisted hand towards the forest. It did not need to tell me twice, my body could finally move again, and boy I ran, I ran so fucking fast. The snow was as deep as before, but it didn't affect my current speed, I swear I beat some type of world record as I bolted trough the forest. I wasn't sure what to expect though, I just wanted to get away from that thing, it was so out of this world, nothing I have ever heard about or seen before. At that point, I only accepted the fact that I was alive, and that Arachiel saved me out of kindness, but I could never have been more wrong. After running for a long time, I could feel the forest loosen up not quite as thick and dense as before. And there I saw my glorious stallion, the snow scooter, covered in snow, almost invisible, but I saw it. I jumped on. I started it up and headed back to my mother's house. My mom sitting in my father's old chair, crying, was the first thing I saw, then my neighbors and the local police officers. Where the hell have you been anon, my mother said, then hugged me as if I it was the last time she hugged me. You have some explaining to do, said one of the officers. I sat down, and explained the whole story, except the part about Arachiel. Thank God, you're alive son, in this cold weather most men would have died after breaking trough a frozen lake like you did. God, I tuffed to myself, God has nothing to do with this creature in the woods, there was something sinister about it all. The police officers and the neighbors left, my mother went to bed, and so did I. Before finally getting a good night rest, I took a last look out the window in my old room, second floor. And there it was, standing not quite tall enough to reach my window, but its face was looking straight at me. Speak or write down my name, and what has been given, will be taken, you have a debt to pay. The same voice as before, as powerful and clear as a presidential speech, this sentence is burned into my memory and I pray to God that writing this won't put me in any kind of trouble. And then it vanished where you probably ask. I don't know, it just fucking disappeared into the dark night. Now, to this day, I have met with Arachiel several times, in my dreams and in life, I'm not quite sure what to do. My mother fell sick not long after the first time I met the creature, and once again it approached me. Asking, if I wanted her to die or live, I of course said I wanted my mother to live, and not long after, the sickness were gone, as if she just healed it away in one night. I fear I have taken choices which is not mine to take, and I fear for my life and soul if we really have a soul. This death dealer, seems to prevent life from being taken away, but I'm certain it can take life too. It is as if Arachiel is using me only as a vessel to fulfill the creature's purpose, to seal deals with it so that it can take the souls of whom it has a deal with when we die, that's why I fear my life. 
my mother's life, and all the other lives I've had the chance to save or let go, will ultimately fade away when I do. I am now 24 years old. I hope to live long. But I'm not sure. As a Rachel is always watching me. Waiting in the darkness.